of my exotic little dragon fruits. This is Rob from My Gay Guy Plays, and today on the Daily Grind, we're back with another installment of Rob Watches Shit so that you don't have to. That's right, I went ahead and put my peepers on the latest dev workshop stream. Um, this one, D.E. Pablo and D.E. Rebecca actually went ahead and jumped on and showcased some of the Wukong rework. Now, we already covered a lot of what they talked about in a previous video. However, they went ahead and clarified a couple things that I figured we should go ahead and touch on. Now, if I'm gonna be honest with you, supposedly this is gonna be coming out this week. It's their words, not mine, so hopefully we'll be seeing it sooner than later. Um, but at the same time, I kind of waited on this because I was like, do we really need a video on this when they're gonna come out anyway? So, I don't know. Other channels probably would have already covered this if they were like snappy and fast. Um, so I do have to thank you if you are watching this, despite watching all of their other videos. It's a whole lot of love for me, but Regardless, I've rambled enough. Let's go ahead and jump on in. So uh, let's touch quickly on his passives. They did show this off. Um, and of course, it is the five levels of immortality. I think that's what they called it. And what happens is basically when you get into a mission, there are three random buffs that are selected for you. Things like being invisible for like 30 seconds, getting um, elemental damage buffs, getting extra loot drops, all of that kind of stuff. Um, but one of the things that they did want to kind of impress upon us is that all of those charges are going to be completely randomized. One of the things D.E. Pablo wanted to make sure of was that there wasn't almost this incentive to die in order to gain specific buffs. So just know it's not going to be something that you can control. Also note that all of these charges will trigger before you need to use a revive. So keep that in mind, especially for things like arbitrations. Um, that way you don't have to be a burden to your team because of a terrible, terrible revive mechanic that they uh, added in. Anyway, moving on. Celestial Twin. Now this one, I'm going to be honest with you when I first heard about it I was kind of like okay that's a cool gimmick but it seems like they've tweaked it in such a way that it's actually gonna be quite viable so one of the things that um, they went ahead and really highlighted was the fact that uh, Wukong Celestial Twin is going to be very aggressive they stated the AI is programmed to be very Leroy Jenkins like they're about to go all in but in order to kind of help out with that they actually have a multiplier to his health so it's a two times multiplier on your like base health but in addition to that um it'll also be affected by power strength so not only will you know he have more health than you but it'll be increased the more power that you put in so he's going to be very survivable but the interesting thing that i wanted to go ahead and point out with this is defy will also benefit him so as you guys know defy is getting changed and um it'll absorb incoming damage and then it'll do a big area of effect damage and then also grant you bonus armor depending on the amount of uh um, damage that you've soaked in and all of that damage resistance is also going to be applied to your clone in addition to that um, cloud walker will now heal you over time as you travel within it um, and it'll also heal your clone as well so there's a lot of ways to keep your clone alive and the clone actually has no duration he lasts until he dies um, until then you can go ahead and uh, recast him if he goes down but he'll stay up pretty much indefinitely. Now, there is an augment that comes along with him, um, but if you don't have the augment on, I believe that you can, like, hover your mouse over him and hold down the button. That'll make him despawn just in case you need him to despawn. However, if you have the augment on, which we'll discuss in a second, there's no way to get rid of him. Not that you necessarily want to, but, you know, the information's out there for you. Now, one of the features for the Celestial Twin is that you can target an enemy with it, and it'll actually mark the enemy very similar to Venari's um, kind of like, you know, attack here or whatever kind of bullshit. And basically what happens is um, the Wukong clone will actually get bonus damage towards that enemy. So if there's a particular target that you need to take down, um, the Wu clone, as they're referring to it, uh, will deal bonus on a marked target. Now, the interesting thing there is there's a lot of people um, asking about how this is actually actually going to affect nullifiers. Now, I don't think that we got the greatest demonstration on how a nullifier will be affected, but from what it looked like, um, because they did, they, there was a nullifier there and the Wu clone was going after it, and it looked like the Wu clone was actually whittling down the bubble. I don't know if that's normal AI, I don't know if that was just me, but literally the Wu clone was like skirting on the outside edges of it and the like the bubble was getting smaller and smaller. So it looked like he could have been potentially attacking the bubble and then finally killed the nullifier. So Pablo basically sending one of his children to kill another one of his children. 
Good job. Not twisted at all. No, no, no. Um, what else do we have to say? Um, so the augment that we were talking about was Celestial Stomp. So that is actually going to be basically a take on um, Rhino's Iron Stomp. So what you will do is you will hold down the one button um, and then it'll cause him to do this stomp in a 20 meter area of effect and it will level take enemies off of the ground. So it's a little bit of CC and additional uh, micromanagement if you want that. I'm going to be honest, the whole build seems a little bit micromanagey, but like I was telling one of my friends, uh, you know, Pablo did make uh, Harrow one of the most micromanagey Warframes out there, so you can't really be too shocked uh, when that comes into play. Now, of course, you don't need to use this, but uh, the one thing that Pablo did want to stress for all of you Rhino mains out there is this does not do very much damage. <laughs> So do not feel bad whatsoever. Don't think that you're being replaced by a clone. That's exactly what he's trying to do. Don't lie. Don't lie. There's some planning and plotting here, okay? I'm just saying. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to go ahead and touch on is that, um, you know, they had talked about the Wu clone swapping from melee into ranged. So that doesn't just affect your primary weapon. So let's say you've got uh, one weapon in your primary and then you go ahead and you create your Wu clone, he'll go into melee, and if you go into melee, he'll go into your primary weapon. You can also use your secondary weapon. All you have to do is when you cast your Wu clone, make sure that you've got your secondary weapon equipped, um, and then go ahead and swap. I believe it's whatever uh, primary or secondary you have equipped at the time of swapping between melee and whatnot that your Wu clone clone will actually swap to. Um, another thing that they did want to mention, just in case, because listen, we always find ways to do weird shit. Uh, if you remove all of your other weapons, it will just stick to the weapon you are currently using. So they did say that they planned for people that were only using one weapon at a time. So that way you guys can be twinsies, like actual twinsies. Um, so that's definitely something for you guys to play around with just in case. Listen, you wanted double twin gracadas, now you got quad, gra quad gracadas, double twin gracadas, quadradas. That doesn't sound right. It's close enough. Moving along, we'll go into Cloudwalker. Like I was saying earlier, um, this will regenerate health as you move around. They actually swapped it from a very, very slow moving cloud that had, I believe, I think it was like infinite duration, right? Um, into a short duration um, super fast cloud. So now you're going to be moving at like Reeve speeds. And for those of you guys who have never used Revenants, Reeve is a little hard to control because it's so fast. But this will help you regenerate your health and get you out of sticky situations. You can also use it in spy missions, and you should not be detected by any of the lasers there. Um, one of the things that they did want to mention is that the Celestial Twin, if you've got him out, will actually continue to fight during the duration of you being in this cloud. Um, and in addition, once you get out of the cloud, he will actually teleport to you. Now, from what it looked like on the screen, both you and your twin are invulnerable while you're in the cloud. So not only do you have um, the passive, which gives you invulnerable, uh, which will give you automatic revives, you'll also have Cloudwalker, which lets you go invisible and invincible, and it looks like invisible at the same time, and uh, it will actually grant you health backwards. So that's a little bit of a bonus right there. Uh, the other thing that I did want to mention that we already talked about a little bit is that if you end up hitting E for like melee or you start shooting at something, it'll automatically take you out of the cloud. Very similar to like Hydroid's Puddle and whatnot. You're able to just jump out of Hydroid's Puddle and jump into Hydroid's Puddle. They made the flow a lot better there. Um, moving along, we have Defy and everybody of course is in a big panic over this. Um, so. They wanted to make sure to make things a little bit more active instead of having a set it and forget it like just I'm invulnerable period kind of bullshit. Um, so Defy, for those of you guys who don't know, basically what happens is um, you go into this kind of like taunt mode and all of the enemies will start attacking you and as you accumulate damage, you'll actually... Uh, accumulate some armor and you'll accumulate a big area of effect attack. So at the end of the defy, um, you'll actually be able to do a big spin attack that does area of effect damage. In addition, after that, depending on how much damage you take, you'll get an armor buff at the end, which caps at 1,500 armor. Um, now, Wukong's armor at his base is going to be 250, and they said that the damage reduction on this is going to be 85%. Um, so, of course, you know, you'll have to factor in whether you do armor mods armor mods on Wukong itself, but I believe that the cap is a cap. I don't think you can actually um, improve it via the use of power strength mods, so you're kind of stuck there. But we have things like adaptation, so that will definitely 
I, I think Wukong's gonna be absolutely fine. Um, now, like I was saying earlier, the clone will also grant you the armor, but at the second, um, at the second point that I wanted to make about this is that your clone will actually cast Defy as well. And what ends up happening is he'll taunt, you'll taunt, and all of the damage that comes into you and your clone will both be added into the Defy pool of you um, dealing damage in an area of effect and also your armor. So that's actually quite nice. Um, the other thing that they wanted to go ahead and point out about it is that it does have a 24 second duration-ish, and that's like base duration on this, um, but it's recastable. So it's one of those things where you have a little bit of time before you need to use it again to be able to keep that armor up. Just be aware that, you know, your new armor buff will override your old armor buff. So you want to make sure that you're using Defy in an area where there's going to be a high population of enemies so that you'll take a lot of damage while you're in the invulnerability phase of Defy. Um, and then you'll be able to cast that AoE and then you'll have a new fresh armor buff for the next 24 seconds. Of course, this is supposed to be moddable by duration just in case you wanted a little bit more of an extension on that. Um, I'm actually looking at his kit now and I'm a little bit more excited than I was previously because this you get a lot of invulnerability via Cloudwalker and Defy already and then you get the three revives on there and I'm like, this could could actually be kind of fun. This seems more like managing your invulnerability, to be honest with you. <laughs> it's like, micro man, like which invulnerability do I want to do? Do I want to do the cloud one and regenerate health? Or do I want to do the armor one that lets me do a big area of effect? I don't know, it seems kind of fun. So I can't wait to get my hands on this. Um, and then they also have Primal Fury. This one they didn't really talk, um, I don't want to say they didn't talk too much about, but they didn't get into any big changes about this because it really didn't seem that there was much of a change aside from the whole new combo style. So they did kind of go over how all of these combos are going to work and it reflects into Melee 3.0. So if you just melee in place, you're just hitting E, um, you're going to do frontal attacks with a high damage multiplier. Now, the cool thing about this is they were saying this is used to take down hard targets like really big beefy targets and it kind of happens organically you kind of stop moving when you're trying to take down um that single target so you'll do a lot of combo multipliers there or not combo multipliers damage multipliers there now if you forward and melee you're going to be doing big sweeping attacks but you won't get any multiplier off of it um or you know combo not how do i say this it's weird because it's like it's the damage multiplier that comes from the combo not like your combo counter combo just you're gonna get big sweeping attack, but you're not gonna get any bonus damage off it. Okay, just, just easy. Okay, it's what you're gonna be using to clear out a lot of enemies. However, there is a variant on this where you can actually aim and melee forwards. That's actually gonna be a gap closer combo. You'll be able to poke an enemy, then you'll be able to dash in, and then you could go ahead and kind of like melee your heart's content. However, you want to continue the combos. So there is going to be a gap closing. Um, functionality in there. And last you have aim and melee in place, which kind of, I don't know if you guys have ever done this before, but it's kind of like the combo where you're basically blocking and he's like slamming his pole into the ground and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. You know what I'm talking about. The big, the big thick girthy pole one. Not necessarily a super long one, but it's like the girthy one, right? Um, that one is going to be his melee in place and aim. So those are your four variations. Um, and I don't know. I mean, it looks fine. I want to go ahead and kind of get my hand on it and get, get my hands on the thick pole <laughs> and see exactly how it all plays out but to be honest with you from everything that I've heard so far I'm very very interested in seeing um, the new Wukong rework hopefully we do get our hands on it this week now the last thing I wanted to address of course is his deluxe skin they did say that it is a low chance of getting it this week uh, most likely the week following but you know they're not promising anything so looks like we're gonna get it in stages little bit of Wukong first. Maybe they'll do some polishing afterwards and then we'll go ahead and get the skin. Makes sense. Uh, regardless, let me know how you guys feel about all of this additional information. In addition, I would like to know uh, down in the comments below if this is uh, the second time you've watched this video. Because usually... Usually I'm fast to get this stuff out, but I was like, I don't know what I want to do with this. Um, let me know if you've already watched another video previous to this uh, with either a plus plus. Give me a plus plus down at the bottom below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Uh, but that about does it for me for now. 
my exotic little dragon fruits. And as always, love somebody, hurt nobody, and touch your body. Oh, I also put out another video on my lifestyle channel, so be sure to go ahead and check that out. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.